Professor, it's great to have you back uh, visiting with us here at the Harvard AMD conference. Tell us a little bit about the progress that you've been making and the line of research that we spoke about. So it's great to be back. Uh, we've been focusing on the role of iron in macular degeneration. Uh, we found that in uh, post-mortem retinas, there's more iron in macular degeneration eyes than in H-matched controls. And that people who have hereditary iron overload, uh, only specific types can have early onset macular degeneration. These are very rare disorders, but we think that they suggest people with typical macular degeneration uh, may have increased iron in their retinas, leading to at least part of the explanation for their disease. So we've tested this in mice and found that iron accumulation in the retina does indeed uh, cause some uh, macular degeneration-like pathology, and we can prevent that pathology by treating the mice with an iron binding drug, an iron chelator. So the question really is, um, would treatment of patients with early macular degeneration with drusen or with geographic atrophy or wet macular degeneration with uh, an iron chelator either intermittently or continuously uh, decrease the risk of vision loss? So at UPenn, we've initiated a clinical trial with a substance that is both an antioxidant and an iron chelator. It's called lipoic acid, and it's a nutraceutical. Uh, it's been used for about 50 years for diabetic peripheral neuropathy, and it's quite safe, which is uh, one of the main reasons we've chosen to test this one. Uh, also, it was very effective in a mouse model of retinal degeneration in my lab, uh, more so than uh, any other compound we've tested. So now we're initiating this clinical trial. The uh, principal investigator is Dr. Benjamin Kim at UPenn, and we'll have about four sites and uh, enroll about uh, 50 patients. The uh, trial is funded by philanthropy and uh, also by the uh, Bright Focus Foundation. And uh, I hope to be able to report on the results of that uh, within a couple of years. We're going to follow these patients who enroll for uh, 18 months. The patients will have uh, geographic atrophy, which unfortunately does expand uh, over time. So the primary endpoint is going to be to see whether the rate of expansion is reduced in patients who take uh, one dose of lipoic acid uh, pill uh, each day. I think it's very exciting development since we last spoke. The clinical implications of this, how broad do you think its applicability might be? And obviously it's very early, uh, but what is your current gestalt as to the essential contributing, the contribution that this might be making to the pathogenesis of uh, dry AM? So in the uh, post-mortem eyes that we've examined, most of them have increased iron. So it's possible that a, a majority of patients with AMD um, would benefit from some reduction in that level of iron because it's more than we need and it can cause oxidative damage. In even, and even in animal models where iron is not the primary cause of the degeneration, we can still see some protective effect uh, with an iron chelator. For example, in models where oxidative damage is caused by light, excess light, or by an oxidant chemical, uh, or even a mutation that has nothing to do with iron itself, the iron chelator can at least partially protect photoreceptors from death. So we think that iron-induced oxidative damage is a central component of, uh, of cell death in the retina, uh, regardless of the cause, and therefore uh, iron chelation could be broadly applicable. When you look at the dose, the dose of lipoic acid, how did you determine the specific dose that you're using for this trial? So lipoic acid is also being tested in a clinical trial for multiple sclerosis. 
which has some pathogenetic factors in common with macular degeneration. Uh, there's inflammation. It involves the central nervous system. And um, these researchers have found that uh, the, the dose that we're testing, uh, which is 1,200 milligrams a day, uh, does increase blood levels of lipoic acid, uh, whereas the uh, lower doses they looked at did not appreciably increase the blood levels. So that, uh, that was the main reason for the dose that we chose. Also, we've uh, recently published a tolerability study and um, found that that particular dose is pretty well tolerated. It causes a little bit of GI upset in uh, some patients, uh, but uh, often there are uh, patients who have um, gastritis uh, already, and uh, there are uh, certain uh, GI medications that can uh, alleviate those symptoms. So it's, it's generally well tolerated and does lead to measurable uh, blood levels. So once you've established that it has a measurable and uh, appreciable and, and beneficial effect, are you then going to create a formal dose response curve? Yes. So the idea is to test the concept initially in a small um, foundation-funded trial. Uh, we'd, we'd really like to have a uh, larger number of patients followed over a longer period of time at several doses. Uh, so if the initial study points toward uh, safety and efficacy, then uh, we'd like to expand it to uh, a trial like the one you're proposing. Professor, thank you so much for sharing with us this uh, significant development, and we look forward to following and hearing from you with regard to results. It's my pleasure. Thank you.